ladies and gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles. Brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions. I like that Sean took an extra Indeed. bite. Not only was he chewing, but then took an extra bite when we were about to start. <laughs> now you take an extra bite of something. Because you were already chewing. We were waiting to see if you were going to stop that chewing. <laughs> Show starts and you were like, let me just go ahead and, and pop this in real quick. Extra bite. You know, Jimmy Lennon in our intro always goes late live from Los Angeles, California. We, we, we actually are for once. Well, three out of four of us. Yeah. 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 I had no clue where you were going with that, Sean Zaitel, but now no, I got it. just, I always think it's funny that, you know, I always think it's funny it's in the intro, but we're never actually live from Los Angeles, but we are this time, so. Well, we're not That's live either. It's but. the intro of uh, of my fight against um, Errol Spence Jr., if nobody, if anyone out there didn't know that, but uh, yeah, no, you're right. We out here on the ocean. Uh, Zaitel, you're in Santa Monica, right? Yes, with great Wi-Fi. Zytel, right down the street, right down the street. That's what Zytel oh, is. Oh, is that his? That's his spot right there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He right down there. Okay. Hey, hey, hey did you wave? Wave. Sean, no, I, wave, Zytel. I can't. Really, I'm, where I'm, at, I'm boxed. I'm in the box. I'm yeah. telling you, if Zytel moves, the whole Wi-Fi is going down. So it's probably better he just sits there. Right. Don't Zytel. move. Zytel. Uh, Zytel. What's up, everybody? Yeah. Welcome to the Wave. The Portaway Podcast. We are um, Aunt and I. We're in Marina Del Rey. Uh, Sean is in uh, Santa Monica. Yep. Uh, frozen. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I was like, that's not real. That was excellent. <laughs> and then, uh, and then Carson, of course, is is at home. He's he's the homebody here. And uh, you know, we we made the announcement that we had something big going on on the Fourth of July. And uh, I guess as you guys see this episode, it would have already happened. So uh, I'm excited to see Tommy um, Davison. Uh, he was at the Martin reunion. I didn't have a chance to speak to him. In my personal opinion, one of the most underrated comedians uh, alive today. Uh, just an amazing, not only talent, but amazing mind. The way that he he does his comedy is, is he's actually, I would say, just to, from a com- comedic standpoint real quick. He's on the opposite side of, of Dave Chappelle, I believe, where Dave can go off the cuff and talk about just about anything. Um, Tommy has a very creative mind and and, cre- and creates his comedy before he goes on stage. And then, of course, he can go off of the cuff as well. But, I mean, Tommy, he just he creates it and he goes out there and he does it. You know what I mean? So definitely want to shout out um, Tommy Davidson. And, uh, of, of course, I, I'm... I'll, I'll say some good things about him as if it, they have already happened, but I'm um, looking forward to, to seeing him. So he killed at Nace Ventura, my yeah. favorite movie of all time. Yeah. Oh, is, is it? Yeah, when nature calls. When nature calls is your favorite Bro. movie of all time. Number one. That's wow. Crazy, Carson. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Yeah, I'm pretty mature. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sophisticated. Zaitel, what's your number one movie of all time? Oh, of all just movie period, The Godfather Part Two. I knew it was going to be The Godfather. I just knew Part it. two. Okay. Part two. The rematch. Yeah. No, it's a sequel and a prequel and an international movie all in one. Yeah. What about you, SP? I don't know if I know your favorite movie. And favorite movie? Law Abiding Citizen. Oh, that's a good Ooh, one. I'm not that's mad. an intense-ass movie, too. I was, yeah, I was like, dude, I'm impressed. Yeah, I'm impressed. I was in fear of that whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you know? I don't know what the hell was going yeah, on. Yeah. People were people were getting wasted <laughs> left and right. That movie was yeah. crazy. What about you, Ashby? I thought you knew this, Carson. Another another Fox movie. Um, for any given Sunday is my guess. Any given Sunday. Ooh, will it be? That movie out, man. I heard Jamie Fox and LL Cool J really fought on the set of that movie because it got so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh all star cast and you know, essentially a lot of a lot of egos on, on, on one in one room and you know that's what it could lead to. But I mean I just thought overall where a lot of people that kind of was I guess Jamie Foxx's like introduction to mainstream Hollywood. I had known about him for years that uh, you know I grew up watching the Living Color and all that. So I mean to this day I still for the sake of words uh kind of hang on to his every word and everything that he does. So you big think- job. You think Jamie was just playing like second round KO by cannabis on set all day just to spice things up? 
<laughs> uh, Shout out to Can I Bust. Well, funny uh, enough, now he's playing Mike Tyson, right? Who was in that video with cannabis? Yeah, true. What a tie together, yeah. Zytel. That was a that was a Carson right. tie together. Right. I told you I got to be a quarterback tomorrow, so I'm on my Carson. Yeah. And then, know, um, and then, and then, and then, and we loving the hat. What's going on with the hat? Oh yeah, we got the new. Uh, we got the Four Way Podcast merch. We got the hats now. Let's check. Oh man, check Looking that out. We, yeah, we got we got we got some other hats too. Uh, hey, you guys got hats? We're just not in the studio right now. Uh, next week we also got some. Hey, Sean's shoes are ready. The guy made Ooh. Sean's shoes. Also, uh, from Carson and Zytel, what's your three most important things in life to you? Carson, be serious about this. What the hell? Right, you're not ready. You're not ready. Yeah, I'm not even. Zytel, I'm not prepared Zytel, for that at all. Tell me your three most important things to you in your life. Me, Fam- probably yeah. I would have off top probably family, God, and you know happiness. All right, I'm going with boxing for one of those. Uh, Carson, what's what's, yeah. what's <laughs> I, I I would maybe I maybe think he forgot maybe, boxing. Maybe maybe it's maybe boy, for, wait no no he included boxing with family. <laughs> how, about, how about how about how about fa- family friends and either soccer or music being I'm the going last with soccer. two? Okay. Oh, oh you know what? I'll mix yours. All right, because we we got some coming. Uh, hundred episode. That's all. Okay. That was that was your teaser. Okay. Yeah, hey, hundred episode. Hundred episode. We we and I've been talking about it for a couple of weeks yeah. now. We yeah, we got we doing it big for the hundredth episode. Hey, I think it's a random day, a random weekend. August it is 21st. what it is. Uh, Carson, you right now. You're gonna be annoyed with me and Sean. Getting you the heads up. Uh, we love you though. <laughs> I'm a, I'm annoyed with both of you pretty consistently. So it doesn't seem it's like, like when he was saying that, I'm like, yeah, it's nothing new. That's a day that ends in Y. Uh, Carson, hey, real quick, because you, you got the Cedar Point hat on. America's roller coaster. Favorite roller coaster at Cedar Point. Ooh, uh, I'm a Maverick guy. I'm a Maverick guy. I am so. too. I am too. I yeah, am. I'm a Maverick guy. I did like I the, the, the new one. The, the uh, I rode that ride. I, was I, like, I like Val Val Raven was one of the new ones. And mm-hmm. I got to get back to get on Steel Vengeance. But yeah, I'm a Maverick, man. Yeah, like, I ain't been there in a few years for me. Is it, Cedar Point known for like certain type of food, like Disneyland for the churros and the turkey? Yeah. They have a pretty decent variety of food, but I don't know okay. if there's anything specific. Okay. But, they, got, they, you know, there. Well, or they got a pink there. A pink yeah, hot, hot dogs? dogs? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They got a pink there. Yeah. Yeah. See the point, know what's happening. No While we're about commenting it. on Carson's attire, you know that you you know fans the Atletica on uh, Carson's jersey. They used to make okay. Eric Morales's trunks and attire. You know the great and this, Eric and this is a and this is a Liga MX Mexican soccer jersey, Pachuca. I figured as much. Yeah. So shout out, yeah, Ty. What did tie that in? Zaytel, hey, you're Zaytel is on on, on he's back on his bullshit today. I like that. He's ready right. for tomorrow. <laughs> I it's, well, let's just talk about it because obviously <laughs> but we go, we but we gonna talk about it. So we we don't we we didn't we don't have the deal done with Fight TV. So everyone out there that we were telling was gonna be able to watch it, they wouldn't be able to watch it. Trust me, I killed it. Next Lampley. Next well, Lampley. You know what? I called I called the producer just to find out what was going on, and they told us that we did told me that we weren't gonna do the the network or the. Fight TV that we that we were expecting to do, and I asked a few more questions that they didn't have the answer to, and he says, "Well, you know, Sean, you've got some experience doing this, so why don't you just, you know, would you why don't you just direct this a little bit?" I said, "All right, I'll I'll uh, I'll, I'll direct." I said, "I, I don't mind um, not being able to commentate to give everyone else an opportunity to do it." So we've come up with a little bit of a game plan and and things of that nature, but. I call Sean, basically let him know that he's going to be, he's going to have the whole night uh, along with everyone else that's going to be here. Shout out to Larry Wade, um, Victor Ortiz, and Kalisha. Wes. Uh, Wes, yeah. Um, uh, so the four or five of us will be kind of doing a little bit of a round robin uh, as this thing unfolds. But I call Sean. To, to say, hey, you know, would you, how do you, are you good doing this and doing that? And I mean, he was just giving it to me over the phone. And I'm like, yeah, I got the right guy for this. I already knew that, but yeah, I got the right guy. So i um, sorry you guys weren't able to watch it this time around, but I guarantee you will see Sean's I tell and you will hear his commentary very, very soon. Yeah. 
Well, it was funny because when you guys were over for my son's birthday party two weeks ago, first thing I do when you guys get settled in, I'm like, so did you ever see <laughs> Chop Chop Corley hurt Floyd and Miguel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had to get right to researching our main event. But yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> and, which I had never seen before. So yeah, anyway. Great. Yeah. yeah. We can start with, so again, this being on Tuesday, so there was a little bit of boxing over the weekend. It was a pretty light weekend overall in boxing, but um, we had an upset to start the weekend, super early Saturday morning. Uh, Maris Breedis lost to Opataya, and Opataya comes out of it with a broken jaw on both sides, Dang. which is pretty crazy. Dang. But yeah, what, yeah. Well, I guess it's gotta- fractured, which... You know, I'm not a doctor. I don't. It's, it's, I don't know the big difference between fractured or broken. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. think it's the same thing. Isn't it? I don't yeah. want either. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he. Uh, though, so that, it was an upset. Um, we'll see what happens. He Obatia got out early and was winning pretty comfortably early, and then and then Breedis being a you know champion, the also a Ring Magazine champion at cruiserweight. Right. Uh, he made it a little a little tougher towards the end, but still um, gets the upset, and then. Yeah. Go ahead. I thought, yeah, the, the Opataya, you know, impressive with his footwork and his speed at cruiserweight, his athleticism in very good shape, moved around like a middleweight, you know, um, and and had a you know great straight left hand, great chin by Breedis in the fourth round. He took a monster right uppercut that busted mm-hmm. his whole face up, had his nose, you know, bleeding profusely for basically the rest of the fight. He stood up to that. Like you said, Carson, Opataya looked like he won five of the first six, maybe all six of the first rounds. Then in the seventh, uh, Breedis cracked him and hurt him, but he fought right back. And, and, and Opataya, he fought a really disciplined but not a timid fight. Uh, he, he was on the front foot plenty in that fight. And even, even though he's the lineal champ now, you know, Ring Magazine, IBF, I actually look, it looked like a performance he could grow off of. Like maybe we didn't see the best out of Jay Opataya just yet. There was a few things he expanded offensively. He kind of came out of nowhere. This dude was in 20 games and then didn't turn pro for years for whatever reason. So he's kind of come out of nowhere to become the top dog at cruiserweight and he replaces. Cambosis for Australia. You know, he just lost his titles and uh, Opataya <laughs> keeps that momentum going for boxing in Australia. Yeah. So. And I know O'Coley was was on Twitter hoping that, that they'll be able to make that fight next. Breedis obviously wants a rematch, but um, yeah, no, definitely stepped up, made it happen. I assume you said Lawrence, Lawrence O'Coley in a British O'Coley. accent, but <laughs> the, Wi-Fi, <laughs> the, Wi-Fi proof, the Wi-Fi prevented that from coming through. But uh, yeah, so that was that was, I guess, the biggest fight yesterday. And then uh, another fight was uh, Ant's guy, the juggernaut, Joe Joyce. Man, and, hey, me and Carson, and, me and Sean, I'm going to put Sean out the car just a minute ago. <laughs> 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 I'm a big Joe Joyce fan, man. I, I, I like Joe Joyce. I like what I see from him, but, you know, I was riding around with the expert, and, he, hey, you know, we have two different set of eyes on Joe Joyce. Uh, he, he, he beat the, and trying to get his boy uh, sniped. I'm trying to put him in there with Deontay Wilder. Oh my! He oh, okay. sniped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, D- Joe. And so Joe Joyce, for anyone that doesn't know, stopped uh, Christian Hammer in the fourth round, I they, believe they yesterday. Laid the hammer to the hammer. Yeah. What? And yeah, Luis Ortiz. Did he? I don't think he stopped him. Did he? Uh, I don't remember yeah, if Luis Ortiz stopped him. Yeah, he may have went at twelve, but yeah, he and then it, he fought. He fought. He fought. He fought Titan Fury, hammer to fought some guys. Huey yeah. Fury. Yeah, yeah. yeah he is. Uh, he, Joe Joyce is just like, mm-hmm. I don't know how to describe it. He's, he's, he's just like a fighter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I, like, I don't know how else to put it. Like, he's going to take some shots. He's going to throw some big shots. He clearly has a lot of power. And, yeah, I don't. Oh, so you, so you want to see Wilder next, Sean? What was your, uh, what was your contrary opinion there? That oh, uh, he's. Uh, we were just kind of talking, and he said, "I don't know what. I don't know if 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 Deontay Wilder could beat him." And you know, when you toss around all these names and people that you want to see, the or that you think Deontay Wilder should come back against, I never considered Joe Joyce to be one of those guys. 
that that Deontay Wilder could excuse me could come back against until until Ant brought up his name and I said, whoa, wait a minute. If there was ever a guy I would want to see Deontay Wilder come back against, it's Joe Joyce. Mm. No disrespect to Joe Joyce, but you're big, <laughs> and you're slow, you're big, and you have no head movement. You're big, and you can't, you have no foot movement. You are a straight forward fighter, not even a backwards fighter. You're just straight ahead with the jab and and a and a, and a pretty clean one two if it's fast enough to get there. And then, as I told Ant, the body shots that he caught hammer with. They were all turn, by accident. Turn you that mother I mean? out. Like, huh? Turn that mother out. I said, I said, you know what, man? I said, I'm not the hate. <laughs> not, not the hate on this dude, but he, he he knocked this dude out by accident. Like, and what I mean by that is it wasn't like he went down and looked at the body shot and threw the body shot. It wasn't like he even got in position to throw the body shot and threw the body shot. He just was throwing punches and, and the body shot came. And you know, was, for the sake of words, it's like a tail. If I if I lean this way, you know a hook is coming, or you know I'm gonna go to the body. So to to his credit, he didn't show the body shot was coming, but I don't think he necessarily meant to throw the body shot with an intent to hurt. I think it was a punch that both of them were punches or three, however many they were that put uh that put hammer down. I think that all of them were shots that hammer just didn't expect. And Hammer, to to keep it real, is not is no longer a fighter that's coming to the ring to win fights. He's a fighter that's coming to the ring to kind of serve his purpose, to you know make his money and and be in the ring on fight night. You know, so uh, I know that probably all of that sounds kind of hard, but no, I'm not. I've never been sold on Joe Joyce, and this fight certainly in a winning effort, a four round fight and knocking dude down with three body shots that he never set up or never looked at or never really had an intent to land to hurt uh, does not sell me that he can beat the top guys at heavyweight. On the flip side, it's pretty cool. You can knock somebody out on accident. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, I said, man, he did that on accident. You know what I mean? And then but, you are trying to knock people out on purpose and can't even do it. But, <laughs> but who am I hitting? Who was I hitting that wasn't prepared to take punches? Yeah, true. Formella, you know, Formella hit. Yeah. Formella, he was he was ready for those shots. He was ready for all those shots. <laughs> Great. Hey, oh. hey, but but at the same time, Sean, uh, I mean Joe Joyce, that would be a big fight. The, the way it'd be promoted and everything when, on and both when, sides. Yeah, and I had to look at that. The people want to see, like to see, guy have been used to seeing big guys up against big guys, and that's what you don't get with Joe Joyce and you. Up until the latter half of of Deontay's career, you didn't get a dude just as big as him, a dude mm-hmm. with the physique like him, which is why we have been begging for Anthony Joshua versus uh, Deontay Wilder for so long. You had two big, you had everything that you wanted in a in a professional heavyweight boxing match. When you talked about Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder, I definitely don't think that that fight's gone yet. If Ole, if if Alexander beats Anthony Joshua again. I, you know, I think that that definitely takes a lot of the air out of the bubble of uh, Deontay Wilder. And Anthony I, Joshua. I like even, and I don't, to be fair, I don't know what will be next for Joe Joyce, but if anything, I like that there will be another guy kind of thrown into the mix in those title fights. Now, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, it, yeah. obviously, we we had Fury. It was kind of like Fury, Wilder, and Joshua. Those were the three guys. They were just going around beating everyone. And then then you kind of get somebody else that's in there. Now you have Usyk in the mix. And Joe yeah. Joyce, wh- whether he's the most skilled defensive fighter, he's going to be a tough night for anybody. And, like, Daniel Dubois was supposed to be the up-and-coming guy, and he, and he broke his face. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I think that's, that was the one that got me. When he beat the hell out of him like that, I'm like, okay, this dude, Joe Joyce, might be suffering. Yeah. But then – what was Duval? Maybe he wasn't nothing. Yeah, and and I think if anything, whether he beats any of those top guys, if he beats AJ Usyk, Fury, Wilder, if he can beat any of them, I don't know. But it will be a fun fight while he's in there. Joe Joyce isn't going to go in there and and not just walk forward and throw big shots. 
Yeah, because none, no, none of those guys are 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 smoke. Like none of those guys get in the ring and smoke any of their opponents. You know what I mean? They all are. Everybody at the well at the heavyweight division beyond uh, Tyson Fury, the, all of those guys are very systematic and have to build up to their knockout. You know what I mean? So I don't I don't think we're gonna get a situation where somebody's gonna come in and let the let the fist fly and it be a two round fight, one round fight. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I think that I think that. He, I, I don't think that he beats anybody at the top level. And, you know, it's still, I think, still maybe another fight or two before he does see somebody that is a world, a world champion. Um, but at he's the same an, time, yeah, go ahead. He, I was going to say, he's just an interesting enough wild card for me. Well, I don't think that he beats them. I, I would have no issue with him getting in there with any of them just yeah. because I think his style. What, what do you think about Joyce overall, as I tell? I mean, I think he's a fearless kind of guy in the ring and in terms of wanting to take on anybody. I think he would take that Wilder fight. But I, I saw a lot of what Sean was talking about, where if Wilder is still Wilder, he can make that fight potentially look a little bit like the Brazil fight. Because stylistically, even though Joyce, I think, is, a be- is better than Brazil, it's not that dissimilar, you know, stylistically from what Brazil brought to the table. And Deontay, if he's still Deontay, could make a highlight real knockout. Uh, but it's a dangerous fight because we don't know what what's left of Deontay after that that crazy trilogy with Fury. Um, but with with Joyce, I, I think he looked very susceptible to counter punching. If he had to fight a guy with the hand speed of Andy Ruiz or Frank Sanchez, I think he could get he'd get countered, especially by Sanchez, very badly. And uh, I, I kind of just see a lot of what Sean saw. You know, he's I don't know. I don't think he'd beat a Usek or a Fury or a Frank Sanchez. I, we got to see how Andy Ruiz looks against Ortiz, but he has such a hand speed advantage in that fight that he should be able to counterpunch Joe Joyce. But, you know, he's a an honest fighter with a lot of courage in there. Um, it seems like he has a good chin. We know he can punch. So like you said, Carson, he's a good he's good for the division. But I don't see him getting to the title, you know, but, the he, you know, you need guys like him in the heavyweight division. Yeah. You had your yeah. hand raised, Mr. Porter. Yeah, it could, I just wanted to speak to Deontay Wilder real quick. I I don't know about health wise. Um, I and of course I'm optimistic. I believe or I want to believe that since that uh, since that Tyson Fury fight, that tr- that the trilogy fight, I I my, my 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 heart is telling me that he is that he's healthy, that he's that he's recovered, that. Everything's okay. That that was that was a heck of a fight. And of course, with me being on a side of it to have to commentate it, I didn't really, I didn't, I never, I never watched it again. And I haven't, I wasn't able to really take into account the punches that that were being landed on him and 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 just the overall night. And it's like the 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 coin one of the coin phrases about boxing is you never leave the ring the same. A piece of you is always left in the ring. So bearing barring all of that, and let's just say uh Deontay Wilder's health is 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 tremendous. We can give it two thumbs up. He's gonna be better because of that trilogy fight. I think that the things that they worked on in camp, I think that they showed up in the ring. And even though he didn't win that fight, I think that he grew on fight night. All that being said, all that being said, if he's got it here and here to still fight, he's 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 the, the most dangerous fighter in the heavyweight division beyond Tyson Fury still at this point. And that's including Alexander Usyk, dangerous for more reasons than just being able to put hands on somebody and get yeah. them out of there. I think he's he's going to be better because of that trilogy fight if he's healthy and if he does still have that desire mentally and, and, and emotionally to fight, he's the most dangerous guy in the heavyweight division right now. And had a great, great interview on, on the PBC's YouTube channel. You can definitely check out if you want to. I just like hearing from Deontay. Like yeah. he's just yeah. the most, maybe one of the more engaging guys in boxing. Yeah. And so yeah. uh, it was great you, to hear. You from know, him. Yeah. And just to say that real quick, he, I think, through the three fights that he had with uh, Tyson Fury, I think people will forget a lot about Deontay Wilder. He really is uh, a promoter in himself, and he really does have uh, character and personality, which is 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 
far and few, and it doesn't come very often in the sport of boxing where you can you have a guy that can promote himself and has character and all these types of things. So you're right. I don't watch a lot. If it's not live, I would definitely go check it out just to see him yeah. and hear his voice and see how he's operating now. That's something that people forget about him. Yeah, and I'd love to see Malik Scott get to continue to add, add some wrinkles to the game plan. Hey, hey, yeah. hey Carson, how do you feel like uh, – maybe with Sean Porter uh, – if he would have had Malik Scott and he fought another fighter and he could have got some rounds in with that style, because I, I know when fighting uh, Tyson Fury, after a while, you're like, yeah, I got to go back to what I know. But if he could have fought a Joe Joyce, uh, whoever, and kind of got some rounds in, getting real comfortable with that new style, and at the same time, I got the power to back me up. Mm-hmm. Worst kind of worse. But uh, let me just get some rounds in to get more comfortable. You think that helps down the line? Yes, me be down to Sean, Sean, that's that's a that's a hell of a perspective. I didn't I never considered that. And we talk about that all the time when guys uh, change trainers or when guys move into a new a new weight class. We're always telling them to get their bearings where they are. And we mm-hmm. I never personally even considered that for for Deontay Water. I think it was the business of boxing had him in a specific position where there was no going backwards. And there's 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 now and that's all. But had he had that opportunity to actually work with Malik in in a work mm-hmm. atmosphere, there's no telling what that ties, what that what that trilogy fight would have looked like in retrospect. Mm-hmm. You know? and, and I I think when we had Calvin Ford on and he talked about going back to a fighter's DNA that you can't really change it. Yeah, I, I think Deontay will always be who Deontay is, and that's that's what we love him. That's what made mm-hmm. him this world champion, and great fighter. But Malik was able to add huh. some stuff. What is this guy doing? Was, no, no, able, no, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. was able to add to that DNA. So it wasn't like he was trying to change Deontay into a completely different fighter. He was just building on Deontay's skill set, his power, and saying, hey, just do maybe you add a little bit of this. That's why I was confident Deontay was going to be able to get it done in the trilogy, was that he was already this great fighter. What on earth? <laughs> and then that the uh and then he was able to get in there. Oh, there he is. Yeah. I was hoping he wasn't butt ass in there, but um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I I wouldn't hate to see a Joe Joyce fight with with Deontay or any of the champs, but um, we'll, we'll see what he ends up doing next. And then um, this coming weekend, sneaky good card on Showtime. Hey, hey, hey Carson, hold, up. hold on, because I have my hand up. Yeah, uh, I thought you were waving to your son. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, and 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 I'll keep this one quick, but yeah, y'all know I'm always good for an analogy. Um, doctors are still studying DNA. And they're still and they're still learning more and more about DNA. Deontay Wilder's DNA was untapped. Malik Scott came in and said, oh, did you know you had this? Oh, did you know you had this? Nobody ever showed you how this worked. Let me show you how this works. You know, so I really do. I think that in a short amount of time, they were able to do a lot with one another as as fighter and coach. And I, I really do hope that uh, that they come back. For uh for for another run at this thing because they can they can make it happen and I would actually love to see Malik Scott get in get in the gym with some of the other fighters as well and maybe try to grow his his coaching resume a little bit because I, yeah. I think he he's going to be an up and coming star and then and I guess we can also touch on oh wait if um, I could yeah go just, ahead. just while you know while we're on Deontay just one question comes to my mind Sean with with Deontay because I would never doubt oh well he leaves right as I'm ready to ask it. he can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> No, is I, I would never doubt Deontay's heart and his fighting spirit, but what about just physically? Like you, you had two hip injuries we didn't even know about. Meaning, you know, maybe it's fair to say to a degree your body was breaking down in your mid thirties, and when he's coming off a a really tough fight like that, you know, it's. <laughs> you saw how slow he was getting out of that chair. Yeah, yeah. When when you see. Just physically, what if it is it possible that it's out of Deontay's control? It's not about his heart and his desire and his fight and spirit. What if, what if you know the body won't respond the way he wants it to? Yeah, I mean, um, what I what I touched on just to start with, I started with health wise. I didn't even start with you know the fact that he's been out of the ring for over a year now, I believe. Uh, you know, and the list goes on from there. Um, I didn't touch on any of that because. For me, I understand that if a fighter is not as close to 100% as he can be, we're not, he's not going to get 
his bang for his buck. I, I already get that. Um, it'll be a year in October that uh, that Deontay Wilder's been out of the ring. So uh, upwards to what, uh, eight months now, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, all that being said, uh, I personally felt like there was never, I never wanted to give anyone a reason to expect anything less of me. So even though I knew that there was something going on with my hip, I did not want to, I didn't even want to tell my dad because I didn't want it to slow down my plans and everything that I had been working for and doing in boxing. You take a look at Keith Thurman. He had a couple of injuries and he's, he fights once like every two years. You know, I didn't, I didn't want that to happen to me. And of course, once people know about the injury, it's like, Hey, we got to get this to as, as close to 100 percent as we can before you get back in the ring with my hip. I'm, I'm this is day to day. We don't know when this is going to change. We, we've set the, uh, the 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 date to expect a change in eight months. We you know, but we still don't know. You know what I mean? So uh, all that being said, I don't expect Deontay Wilder if he does have any injuries or anything like that. I don't expect him to give us any indication that something's wrong. Um, and the other side of that is, uh, if there is something wrong, we'll find out in a moment. We, we won't find out. We, he won't tell us because then that becomes the only thing that anyone cares about. Um, uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and go there. You talk about a guy like Ryan Garcia, uh, having to get to pull himself out of a fight because of, uh, emotional um, and 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 um, and mental, and mental health. health issues. Excuse me, because of mental health issues, that's going to be one of the key things that everybody talks about before he even steps into the ring and throws one punch. Everybody's going to be talking about that. You know what I mean? So, fighters, man, we do the best we can not only to protect ourselves but protect y'all as at the same time, protect our audience at the same time. If the audience has an indication that something's wrong, they may not tune in or they may tune in expecting something and the list goes on. So, you know, I think overall, I, I hope that his health is all there. Um, and there's no telling. There's no telling unless he obviously, unless he says something. Yeah. And, and we can actually, I say we can actually stay heavyweight. So the, there is a DAZN card next week, um, headline Chisora and Pulev. And then, the co-main is actually really interesting. Yeah, the, co- the, the co-main is not an interesting fight from like a, a general perspective, but it's Madrimov and Soro, and they fought on an undercard last year. And we talked about it briefly on the show, I think, where the bell rang and Madrimov hit Soro with like almost 10 punches and the ref oh, the stopped rang. the fight after the bell. And so... It was like a really weird ending. There was some controversy, and then they were like, nope, fight's over. Was that and the fact that I commentated? No, this one was overseas. Okay, this one wasn't this wasn't the one in Puerto Rico. No, I, that, I can't think of I can't think of where this the, one was. Zoro's the same, it's the same guy, though, right? Michelle Soro. I don't think so. No, no, different guy. Different yeah. guy. But it was just a weird ending. And then the one guy I would like to see on there is a Yarko, is a good fighter at 154 that's kind of coming up, and then uh, yeah, and then that Madrimov Soro rematch, but then the Showtime card—that's the one. And like I I say off, it's a-, a lot of people feel like. Oh, no. Go ahead, go ahead, Ray Carson. A lot of people were high on. A lot of people were very high on Madrimov very early in his pro career, and they feel like with all his crazy footwork and his, his kind of style, he could one day be a big threat to Charlo and the big boys, you know. But he, he's probably still a ways off of that. But you know, yeah. just something to keep an eye on with Madrimov. Yeah, and, and I think he'll just probably look this time to end the fight without a weird controversial ending. So um, I assume he beat Soro. It was a decent fight, good action fight the first time, but I don't think he tests him. And then, um, yeah, that so that Showtime card, I'm not going to claim it's the fight of the year. I'm not going to make that claim again. Uh-oh, come on. It's a, it's a pretty damn good card, though. So <laughs> All right. on there's a YouTube fight beforehand, or uh, the part of it's going to oh, be on what? YouTube beforehand, the oh. Showtime YouTube. And so Ramon Cardenas and then finally getting back in the ring. One of my favorite fighters in the game, Speedy Rashidi Nicole Ellis. Ali Walsh. No. <laughs> Rashidi Ellis is getting back in there against Alberto Palmetta. But I think everyone, I'm uh, to be candid, I'm not too familiar with his opponent, but I think everyone, I'm not gonna speak for you guys. I think yeah, all no. we've wanted is just to see Rashidi Ellis back in the ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When he's in a ring, he's very entertaining. Yeah. It gives us a good show. 
It yeah. lives up to his name. Definitely got fast hands. Yeah. And so he'll be on. He's the headline of that YouTube portion, which would be cool. So um, he'll be on earlier on. We can see him get back in there. And then one of our favorite fighters at 135, Frank Martin, Frank Martin the ghost. Okay. Now, our guy. Now you see him. Oh, now you don't. Should have our guy on. Yeah. Yeah. We could have. Uh, he fights Ricardo Nunez. Just another fight for him just to continue to grow at 135. You're, you're a Frank Martin fan, SP. I am. I'm a Frank Martin fan. He told me he was going to be coming back. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and bust him out. He was wanting to get on Uh-oh. the podcast to promote the fight. And I was Damn. like, oh. yeah, he called. Yeah, he hit me up. So um, we, we might get him on in the next and, you know, relatively soon. Or is, that fight fight. Next, is that fight next it's, week? Yeah, it's next fight's week. next week. Yeah. Hey, I messed uh, up too, Sean, because uh, me and him were talking about some merch. I ain't get the merch to my man yet. Uh, <laughs> I, like the, I like that Sean said... Sean said, I'm going to bust him out and then bust himself out for not yeah. getting Frank Martin on the show. Yeah. Frank Martin doing what he's supposed to as a fighter. Wants to promote yeah, his yeah, fight. Yeah, 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 and yeah. we, I, I, again, I don't speak for you guys. I'm a big fan of him. I think he's yeah. certainly going to be a threat at 135. Yeah, I was going to um, say, let me let me speak on why I'm a fan of him. And yeah. I, you know, I, I'm, and, and I obviously, I think that it does, if it's not obvious, I think that it does. For me, it does something to the, the fact that nobody really talks about him. I, and I was never someone that was like, man, they're not talking about me. But at the same time, I just knew that when there, when I was the when I was the B side or I was the guy counted out, I was like, where's the respect? You know, and so for me, it was kind of funny. But I so I look at him not like he's me, but I look at him in the sense that he understands that he's going to go out. He's got, he has to go out there and put on the show. And for guys that have that understanding, it just kind of second nature for us to do the things that we do for him. It's speed. It's quickness. It's that southpaw stance. He's got power too. And it's, um, and it's, and it's the fact that he's working with Derek James, you know, he told me, he feels like Derek James has taken him to another level uh, since since working with him, you know what I mean? So I think that it's safe to say that until Frank is in the ring with one of the, the heavy hitters at 135, we should expect him to shine. We should ex- expect him to um, increase his profile. And, uh, you know, that's what I expect out of this fight out of him next week. What do you think, Zaito? You like him in the, in the in the mix at the top at 135? Definitely, definitely think he's, um, you know, like a like a dark horse because obviously the, the four kings and those guys got up all the press and the attention deservedly. But I think I think I may have actually been there the day he really helped get himself signed to, to PBC because he sparred Gervonta Davis when Gervonta was preparing for Leo Santa Cruz. And he, he did well enough in that session that it got, I think, Soon thereafter, he was on the PBC radar. So I saw, you know, in that sparring session, not just with Tank, but with a lot of guys in Floyd's gym, all the things Sean said. He has he has pow- good power, um, southpaw, really good speed and athleticism, good skills. So he brings a lot to the table in a loaded division. I remember when I watched him, I said, you know, damn, man, like lightweight has another killer on its hands because, you know, outside of the cream of the crop, you know, the, the, the young guys, Tank and Haney and and well, Lopez is moving up now for Campa. But, you know, all those guys, Garcia, Michelle Ali Rivera, Isak Cruz, Frank Martin, Ryle Valenzuela are they're, they're, there's just a host of dangerous, talented young fighters in this division. And he's definitely one of them. He is, you know, um, I think, you know, on his way to being the definition of a contender in a loaded division, a guy who who could potentially stand a real shot at knocking these other lightweights off. Uh, Keyshawn Davis, another guy who's, who's in this mix, but uh, Ricardo Nunez, I think tank blasted him out and around. I think um, Frank's more patient than that. I don't know if he'll get this guy out of there and around, but wouldn't be surprised if he stops him in spectacular fashion. Uh, he brings a lot to the table. Yeah. yeah and, in a loaded yeah. division. Sean, let me ask you this real quick. Has the, has the 135 division always been this thick? And we just didn't know, or is this kind of a, a wave that's come up for the 135 pound division? I mean, historically, it's a very talented division, uh, but no, I, no, this is this is a wave because you know you four or five years ago. What? Let's see. Uh, I think it may have been 2019. You had Luke Campbell fighting Lomachenko. You know, two veterans fighting for 
really all the marbles in the division. And then you look at the guys Lomachenko got through to get to the top. It was Linares, a veteran, Pedraza, a veteran. You know, it, it, four, four or five, three or four or five years ago, it was a very good division, but Tank was h- hanging around 130. You know, um, uh, Ryan Gar- Garcia and Haney were still, you know, very, very young and green. And no, the division is loaded in a way it, it hasn't been in probably a long time. It's, it's, it's extremely, it's arguably the most talented division in boxing. We just got to actually see these guys fight each other. A lot of names in the division, but not enough of them taking each other on, you know? Yeah. Hey, so- Sean, Sean's, I tell you, I got one for you. Who's a guy in the 135 that no one knows right now? That's that has some. New York is Gamboa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh, know. I have God, to, I'm God, sure. I'm God, sure. You got your heart. Carson. Always. That's all. A guy, just, a guy just, that's a contender that no one's thinking of talking about. I don't know. I think, I, I think all boxing fans pretty much know the top 10, you know, okay. even to the Michelle Ali Rivera's like it's, it's a well-known loaded division. And I'd have to look at the bank. I'm sure there's no okay. one in the rest of my mind. But right now, I can to the top play in the division. You know, you think, know who think you know who it would have been for me would have been Frank Martin. I was yeah. I was gonna say I think Frank Martin is that right. guy that nobody yeah, talks yeah, about he, that, yeah. that could actually be a world champion in his next fight if he was yeah. going up against a world champion. Because yes. out, outside of us hardcore fans, I don't think the casuals talk about Frank like that. Yeah, they're not thinking about Frank or Frank's a problem. Yeah, it's, whole- yeah, it's 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 no one's fault. I, I wouldn't say it's anything that he has or has not done to this point, mm-hmm. but. I do in my mind. Wait, so we're like we we say who wins in the fight, uh, Haney or or Javante Davis? Who wins in the fight? You know this guy, that guy. Honestly, I think that where we're talking about those guys and where we could debate, go back and forth. There's no one definitive answer. I think if, I honestly think that that if we said who wins in the fight, Frank Martin or Devin Haney. We, we have to take every, into everything into account, and that becomes more of a 50-50 fight than most people would expect us to say or think. Or um, let me just speak for myself. It, it's more of a 50-50 fight than most people would, would would expect me to say. And I would go, honestly, I would go down the line with him. I would say that the fight between Frank Martin and Javante Davis is very close. I wouldn't say 50-50, but it's very close. Um, and the list goes on. So, Hey, Sean know, Porter, is he a highlight knockout away from turning the corner. You know, Keyshawn Davis got that big knockout and it kind of pushed him a little bit. But with that, Keyshawn, had, that a bit of, Keyshawn had a bit of a profile coming into, into the pro ranks. The Keyshawn, he promotes himself very well. I mean, he's a great Hell talker. Of a, yeah. Got a, got a great, uh, got great character. Like, what does he call himself? Uh, what does he call himself? Is it, is, it, is it D3? D3, yeah, D3. I'll throw a gang sign. Biz, no, the businessman. I thought Keyshawn called himself. Oh, yeah, he is the oh, businessman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about Derek because they have D3 with the brothers. Yeah, me too. Oh, and and oh. Mighty Ducks. But. Right. <laughs> he calls himself the businessman. You know what I mean? So he knows how it works. He's got ESPN to, to really help with all that. I really wouldn't say Keyshawn, I, excuse me, I wouldn't say Frank Martin is a highlight away. I think mm-hmm. he's a fight away. They got to put him in the right fight, Carson. They got to put him in the right fight against a world champion, and I think that that's what that's what does it for him. Yeah, and and he'll open up the Showtime card this week, which should be a good. Usually, there's a pre. And not to not to not to talk about myself anymore, but that's kind of how it happened for me. It was <laughs> before it was before I fought um, uh, um, Devin Alexander. You really and it wasn't that wasn't a highlight performance or a highlight reel or anything like that, but. It just was the right fight at the right time, and I was kind of on my way. So yeah. I think that that's how it's going to work for uh, for Frank Martin, too. Yeah, and then the second fight, so the co-main. Um, this is a nice little fight, to be honest with you. So moving up a division, Brandon Figueroa. Is Uh-oh. Moving up. Yeah, moving up to 126. Big fan of the podcast. Big fan yeah. of the podcast. We, we, we do need to get Brandon Figueroa on soon at some point. We do. We yeah, do. We, yeah, we, hey, again, just to reiterate everyone <laughs> that knows, we were, we were wrong about his fight with Neri. Um, Apologize to his sister. Absolutely, and so he oh, fights. I, I, no, I didn't, I didn't. Your internet's a mess. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So so, and it actually ties in with Neri. So Figueroa fights 
uh, Carlos Castro, who his last fight was Luis Neri. Mm, yeah. And he got dropped early, but I remember when we recapped it, Neri took his foot off the gas pedal a little bit, and we talked about how he seemed like he was kind of coasting, and Castro started to, to build momentum a little bit and uh, make it a tougher fight. But uh, that'll be Figueroa's first fight at 126 as a WBC title eliminator. Um, I, I think it's a good fight. Brandon Figueroa, again, as we mentioned with a lot of fighters, never in a bad fight. You're not going to watch Brandon Figueroa and be like, I really wish he'd walk forward more and throw more punches because he's going to do that. And, <laughs> and walk Carson, forward. He said on social media, he's bigger, he's stronger. Imagine what he was doing at 122. He's going to do at 126 even better with more and, power. And that's kind of what Sean had had alluded to, that he that he thought he was just big for the weight. And so now he's a – what do you think of him at 126, SP? Yeah, I think that it's uh, – it's, some guys are going to move up and – Things are going to even itself out for them. They're going to move up and guys are going to be just as fast as them, or they're going to move up and guys are going to be just as strong as them. I think for him, it's still going to be, he's still going to have that X factor. He's still going to be bigger, stronger, just as fast. Uh, the gas tank is, is still going to be there. And so I, I think we're going to see, we're, personally, I think we're going to see the same Brandon Figueroa. We'll just see it at a higher weight class. Yeah. And I don't. Excellent I, I would, so my my knock my knock if anything if I you know I really wouldn't. Even call it a knock. you don't have to knock him. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say I really it. wouldn't call it a knock, but I just want to see more skill from, yeah. from 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 Figueroa, and I don't see as much skill as I as I want to see. You know, and, and Sean, he's a hell a of, he's a hell of a pressure fighter like yourself, and he does it well, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. what he does in pre pre he's on your ass. You can't go nowhere. The only I think he's the only guy. Who's tall and rangy that 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 Carson is not is not like, hey, you know, step yeah. back and use the jab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what true. what do you so and good point from Ant about him being a pressure fighter as a notorious pressure fighter? Obviously, you <laughs> you had a different style of your own. What would you like to see from Figueroa specifically that maybe you haven't seen yet or you'd like to see more of as a pressure fighter? I so when I analyze Figueroa and you and, and, and just follow me with this, but I just I think that it's a it's a lot of this, and I like to see things tighten up. I like to see I like to see a tighter hook. I like to see a tighter body shot and a body shot and and work right down the middle, opposed to just the I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you. Even with my even with my pressure, you could always see that stuff was was set up off of a feint or, or set up off of the head movement and things like things of that nature. The, my my stuff wasn't. My, even me personally, I th I think that I was an ugly fighter. I mean, I just kind of is what it is. But uh, I think that my stuff, I had moments where I was very sharp and very crisp. And, you know, I like to see uh, the, the sharpness kind of take precedent as well as the as well as the pressure. Maybe maybe more feints from Figueroa as well. Potentially, uh, you know, add that to Freddie, the arsenal. Freddie Rose told me back in like 2010. He said, you faint very, he said, your faints are great. He said, that's a lost art in boxing. He says, nobody faints anymore. And that, and he said, never, he said, never stop fainting. That gave me more energy to, to faint more and more and more. And then my dad was like, hey, you know, Hey, double up on the faint, give, give two. So now stagger it, give one and then give two. You know what I mean? So we actually, my fainting became combinations. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we weren't just out there fainting, you know what I mean? So Guys don't faint the way I, I faint it. And so I wouldn't just say, you know, hey, you got to use the faint more knowing that they're not going to faint the way that I do. But definitely one faint and then, and then let let go. Things of that nature. I think yeah. that would, would make aesthetically would make him look better. And even though Sean's retired, he still faints around the house. So like go to open the fridge and give it kind of a whoa, whoa. double, double, double. Yeah, that's my wife. She's like, I ain't scared of you. <laughs> Does Figueroa. And I don't think I don't think he'll have too much problems with Carlos Castro, who, you know, fancies himself a good boxer on the outside. But I just don't see him keeping Figueroa off. I, there's a chance Figueroa is just as strong or even stronger, putting that weight on up to 26. But does he remind you guys? And I mean this in, in the most complimentary sense, not not the, the, the hand wrap controversy. But does he remind you guys of Antonio Margarito in these weight classes? Just the relentlessness. Uh, yeah, and the size and the chin and yeah. Yeah, yeah never I, I never thought of that. Yeah, never thought of that. Yeah, You're right. He, he's relentless, that's for sure. So yeah, I, I do think 
I like Zaitel said, I think he's he's just gonna overwhelm Castro at some point. Uh, and that that's the co main. And then the main event, another good one. It's so it's funny. Let, hey, let me say this real quick because yeah. when you talk about it, it, and that's how it happened for me, I had guys that I wanted to watch that I thought well, I could take something from. And then people started saying, yeah, you, you look like Shane Mosley. And not just then people started talking about not just the way I look like him physically, but I, I boxed like him. So I would get online and I would look at Shane Mosley and I would try to do things like Shane and then make a part of Shane's style, a part of my style. And I would encourage guys like Brandon Figueroa. If you're hearing people say you look like a great margarito, better, you know, forget about all of the extra stuff. The dude had a relentlessness in a in a in a style and a way of boxing that made him great. You know, kind of is what it is. Take a look at somebody like that and and improve your boxing based on the greatness of of someone like Antonio Margarito. And the list goes on. You know, just want to encourage guys out there: don't be afraid to look at other fighters and take from their style and make it your own. Hey, a lot of people are saying, yeah, he fights like Sean, Sean Porter. I want you to fight like fight like Isaiah, you know, but but take some of Sean Porter if you like Sean Porter, but fight like Isaiah. I don't want people to just think that one style is the only style you got. Take some of that style and add it to yours and make it who you are. You know, I yeah. tell people all the time, people talk about it being the Sean Porter style, but Sean, it was just know. Sean Porter. But Sean Porter was a mixed up bowl of everybody else. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and so that fight with Figueroa and Castro is the WBC featherweight eliminator. eliminator. And funny yeah, enough, the oh. WBC featherweight title is the main event. So <laughs> that that works out well. That I like That's when they do that. And oh, so who y'all, Mark, y'all, y'all got uh, Figueroa stopping him? I got to stop him. I do. I, I have him yeah. stopping him with a body shot. Okay. I like Castro, but I don't think he can. I don't think he'll be able to t- uh, keep Brandon off of him. Yeah. Um, and so the main event, Mark Magsayo, the new world guy. champ against Ray yeah. Vargas. Um, that, that's going to be an all-action fight with those two. Yeah. Um, down in San Antonio. Yeah. Some of the yeah, greatest down, fans, Sean, say. Yeah, down, down, down in San Antonio. Um, I think we were talking about that. Uh, I think it was that yesterday we were talking yeah. about that. I uh-huh. said – I said when the, my first time going down there, I think that story's been told. Uh, it, was, it was Adrian Browner versus um, Marcos Maidana. And people were like, "You have you ever been down here before? And I was like, no, nah, I've never been here before. And they were like, you just wait. You just watch. And people were talking about it so much. I'm like, well, what's the big deal? OK, it's a big crowd. So what? That re- that arena was rocking. They were at um uh, uh what what's the Alamo state? Dome? Alamo Dome. They're at the Alamo Dome, and it was rocking. And I told Aunt, I said, not the same as English fans. They're not drumming and all that, but they're the English equivalent to it over here in the United States. It's down there in Texas. San if Antonio. only there was a fight a couple weeks ago that was in San Antonio that I wanted to go to. <laughs> yeah, somehow, some way, we just couldn't Un- make that trip. unreal. But unfortunate, but. We um, so for oh, okay. I guess we can start with Ray Vargas. So this will be his second fight at 126. He he held a title 122 before, um, five times. Yep. Yeah, and, and it, it, he's a he's a tall tall guy for the weight and runs his hands. He has been down more than a couple of times in his career, but and, he keeps getting back up. Yeah, keeps getting back up. He, yeah. He's undefe- he's undefeated. Um, yeah, his. His defense is definitely a little concerning against a guy like Maxayo. Um, but he but he certainly has what it takes, I think, to give Maxayo trouble. We saw Gary fire that left hand down the middle. Almost it was like a homing missile. Every time he threw it, it seemed like it landed. He's Even not, when that was all he had. Yeah. And he and he's not that style of a fighter that Gary is where he's able to do that, but the fact that that Magsayo's defense maybe wasn't exactly where it needed to be. Um, obviously, got the win against Gary, but um, I think that'll be interesting. Any any Ray Vargas takes from a, across the panel here? I think uh, you, you want to go? You want to go first, SP? No, no, go ahead. He just said across the panel. I'm like, <laughs> we're a panel now. Yeah, we. Well, I, I'm I, in I, panel view right now on Zoom. <laughs> Watching his most recent fight uh, on the Canelo plant undercard, mm-hmm. I did notice he started off very good in the first four to five, first half of the fight. Really good combination puncher, Ray Vargas. But I think 
with his, his, you know, his great length and height at these weights, he's gotten very used to just pulling that chin up in the air and straight back and, and relying on his length to just be out of range with these shorter guys. And while Mike Sayo isn't a, the, the tallest or longest guy, he is a strong, good size featherweight. And he, he, sometimes he cuts the distance a little recklessly like Pacquiao did his feet get out in front of him before his hands are there or vice versa. But with that explosive kind of Filipino style, he, he is able to cut distance with hands and feet at the same time with, you know, speed and power. So I could see this being a, an exciting fight where Vargas is kind of piecing up uh, Max Sayo in the first half, getting off to a good lead. But Max Sayo, you know, keeps coming, has his will. And in the second half of the fight, you know, Vargas slows down a little bit. He gets to him. And I can see him knocking out Ray Vargas because when I was watching that fight at the MGM on that Canelo plan undercard, I said, man, this guy with his chin up like that, it just looks like one so kind of Fundora even to a degree. But I, I like Fundora a little bit better but because uh, he's a little better on the inside. Uh, but th- this guy, I said, man, he, he might get caught nasty one day. And maybe Mike Siles, the guy to do it. Maybe he has to do it coming from behind. Maybe I'm stupid for picking him. Because Ray Vargas's trainer is the great Nacho Beristein, who, you know, figured out that Filipino style probably as good as anybody, you know, along with Floyd Mayweather. He figured out Pacquiao and the way they jump in kind of. Lucky right punch. Right. Lucky punch. Lucky. No, no, they <laughs> they teed that up. They studied that thing. Yeah, that was the same <laughs> fate Manny did to drop Marquez all oh. times in the first fight. Said, I've seen that before and ran him into it. So maybe I'm wrong for picking against you know, maybe the greatest Mexican trainer of all time and Nacho, but 19 years ago in the same spot, uh, this kid ain't Manny Pacquiao, but this is where Pacquiao broke out in America in 2003. He knocked out Marco Antonio Barrera. Max Sayo really seems to have the affection from the Filipino fans. I, I think he'll get it done in a, in a really good fight. So, yeah, it, I, I think I almost prediction wise will go exactly with you. So Max Sayo, um, I think it could be somewhat similar to the end result of his fight with Julio Ceja because he was, a lot of people thought he was losing mm-hmm. um, and maybe getting outboxed a little bit. And then he planted Ceja right in the corner. And, and that was, that was it for him. It was all she wrote. Um, I do think Mag Sayo is where Vargas is a little more irresponsible. I think um, offensively compared to his defense, I think Mag Sia, while his defense may not be the best, I think he's just more fundamentally sound, and I, I think he'll be able to uh, to get to him. What do you think about Mag Sia on his first title defense, SP? It's a, this is a 50-50 fight. I think that uh, I'm I'm not going to make a prediction at all. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I try to do my best to stay away from making predictions anyway. But this is what I see. I see that Ray Vargas is very long, very fast, runs his hands and looks at his targets. He's, he is very accurate with his punch placement. Uh, and then you got Mike Sayo, not as fast, not, 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 not can be busy. And I, I, I don't know. I, you know, I think that Ray Vargas is going to challenge my sale. Mm-hmm. And is Matt and is, Ma, and is uh, Mark going to step up to the challenge and fight with him? I think fighting with him is is a very good that I think that um, that puts Mark in range to land the punch that he needs to catch Ray. I think that Ray will take the lead early. I, I agree with with Sean. I think there's no doubt that that uh, that Vargas is going to take the lead early, and then he's and then and then Mark is going to be challenged. I don't think Mark stepped into the plate when when um, when Gary Russell when when the challenge was presented and Ray started or excuse me and Gary was moving. And challenging Mark to come get him. I don't think that Mark changed anything about his style. I, I, I mean, we said in the moment. I don't think that Mark beat uh, Gary Russell. Um, so that being said, I'm just uh, pulling back on the experiences that we that we've seen that we that Mark has had. That experience that Mark had for uh, showed Mark that he has to be able to make adjustments during the fight and it showed the entire camp that let's, let's be clear that we can't put it all on Mark, but the whole camp, nobody made adjustments in the fight against Gary Russell. If you come to the ring expecting just to be able to pressure uh, Ray Vargas and, and hopefully get to him and land that shot. Like you get, like he, like he did against say I don't think that happens against uh, Ray Vargas. Of course, you know, again, going back to what Sean said, Ray does, 
fight as he punches, the chin raises. When he throws body shots, the chin is up in the air at the end of that shot. He throws to the other side, the chin is in the air at the end of that shot. So, I mean, there's some moments for both of these guys. It's a 50-50 fight. Uh, I honestly, man, I like to lean with I, I, you know, I lean with with work rate. The work rate is on the side of Ray Vargas. How, how do you think? So Vargas is clearly the more experienced of the two fighters. How can yeah. he use that experience against the young champion like Max Sio? Yeah, I mean, you take a look at what Gary Russell was able to do. Gary didn't have two hands. I think if Gary has two hands, that fight ends differently. But even with his experience, he was able to keep Mark off of him. He was able to to, to position Mark and put him in, uh, and and put him in position and land that that straight left and things of that nature. The same thing goes for Ray. I think that Ray can 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 combination can can beat him to the punch. But then also the Ray, I think, can find moments to put Mark in position for the counter that check hook. For the for the counter body shots, you know. So while putting Mark in position to counter punch him, he still leaves himself in position to get hit, you know. Yeah. So it's a that's what make, fight. And that's what right. makes an exciting fight. What you think? And, man? It, and I think it's gonna be an exciting fight. No, after what I just heard from y'all three, if y'all if you guys are not excited to watch this fight after what they just told <laughs> you to fight, I they and Mark and Ray hasn't done nothing compared to what you three just did. Yeah. And this sounds like a perfect <laughs> example of style makes fights. Yeah, it's about to be a hell of a fight. And oh, speaking of Styles it, Make Fights, uh, shout out to them, uh, stylesmakefights.com. They did the uh fight gear for Mark Maceo. Oh, there you go. Okay. So, yeah. And so let me let me raise my hand and say this: like, I'm gonna keep it real. You know what I mean? I don't I can't not not say the things that I feel need to be said uh to make sure people watch this fight, to make sure people understand what to expect from this fight, so on and so forth. Mark is is a supporter of the Porter Way podcast. He's a supporter. Yeah. He's a supporter. Uh, he 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 went out and got Styles Make Fights Fight Apparel for his for his very next his first uh, title defense uh, uh, title uh, um, defense. Uh, excuse me, uh, defense. Yeah, excuse me. Uh, all that being said, I can't not say how I feel about this fight. I do That's think true. that it's a fifty fifty fight. I think that both of these guys are exciting. It's going to be an exciting fight. You know, it, it's one of those fights where both of them are very offensive fighters. And the fact that their defenses aren't great is what makes it awesome. Like if they were just elite defensive fighters, you're like, OK, it'll be more of a tactical matchup. But the fact that either of them can get laid out at, at any point, I think, is what makes it exciting. Yeah, so like, even when I play that. Yeah. Even when I play that in my head, Mark does keep his hands at home and he will block a lot of shots that Ray is going to deliver. You know, so off of the blocks, what are you going to do? Like, are you going to be quick enough, fast enough to 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 give the return? The fact that. Hey, hey, Sean, uh, I, I, I hear you still got that pop over there. I hear that pop. Yeah, <laughs> just broke his own <laughs> hand. <laughs> touching Mark on all the demos today. And yeah. then like what Sean said about about um, Ray's uh, coach. They're gonna they're gonna have him in position to do what needs to be done against a Filipino fighter. Great fight. Yeah, gonna be a good one. I mean, um, any predict any prediction from you, Ant? I got Mark. I'm okay. gonna roll my guy. You support me, I'll support you, baby. <laughs> hey, that's how I rock. Yeah, you know, and I, I don't, you know, I said that because I don't want it to seem like I'm not supporting him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do, I do, I do. I, I like Mark. He's a he's just a good guy yeah absolutely y'all know me yeah, exactly. i'm all about the good guys of this sport you know what i mean so and ray but, vargas good time, story coming back off a broken way, leg I see both these guys I see ways both these guys can win this fight yeah i mean which, hey, which yeah. gives us it's gonna be a great should be a great show next week so if you yep. didn't watch this week or if you want somebody else to watch this show tell them to watch next week <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying as i tell the ant like you were saying about it the styles make the great fights when have we ever really seen a fighter from Mexico against a fighter from the Philippines not giving us a good fight, you know? So, yeah. I mean, everyone talked about Mexico versus Puerto Rico when I was growing up as a boxing fan, but I got exposed to more Mexico versus the Philippines than anything, you yeah. know? So that's a great Actually, rivalry in the sport. I got a little annoyed when I was doing work with... Uh, when I was Don't do it. Don't do it, Sean. Because they were <laughs> wanting to do... They were, they were wanting us to... They were promoting Puerto Rico versus Mexico fight. And they were really wanting us to like talk about the history of Puerto Rico and Mexico. And so I was like, I don't have a problem doing that, 
But I got to believe that this fight is going to be a Puerto Rico versus Mexico fight. If it, if I don't, then I can't give it that energy. This right here is classic Mexico yep. versus Filipino. I got no problem talking about this one. You yeah. know what I mean? It's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. And then uh, we can kind of close up just a couple of things of news. Uh, the rumor is that Baumgartner will be fighting Michaela Mayer as the co-main to Savannah Marshall and Clarissa Shields. At the O2 the Arena? O2 Arena, I uh, believe okay. September. Um, so that's exciting. I told, and, and I, told that's Ann, be- I told Ann yesterday, I said, that's the best thing they could have did for this car is put on yeah. another great female boxing car or uh, fight. Yeah. Uh, instead of trying to stretch it and give them their own their own car. And I'm not saying they're not worthy of the yeah, yeah, car, course. but man, to stack this car like this is great for boxing. It's great for female boxing. Yeah. And, and then it's, it's probably it's gotta be what the greatest double header in women's boxing history. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I don't, I'm not even sure if it's close. I think that's hey, that's it by all, a wide margin. Only thing make this better and you throw uh KU Taylor Serrano on there too. Ooh. That would be unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be classic. Now, then, everybody hey. in the boxing world, like, no, nah, nah, hold on now. We right. Right. <laughs> hey, Carson, you know what I love about Mayer and uh, Bumgarner? Yeah. They have sized each other up so well in terms of how they feel they'll win the fight. You could yeah. see exactly what the two fighters are talking about playing out either way. Michaela Mayer says she has no second gear. In the second half of that fight, when that right hand doesn't land in the first five, I'm going to work her over. But mm-hmm. then you see Bumgarner post clips of when Ann Wolf knocked out um, – uh, Valerie uh, Mafood and, and it's that overhand, it's walking her right into a right hand bomb. And you can see Baumgartner making Michaela walk right into a bomb. So the, the, the trash talk is as good as it gets right now yeah. between those two, the bad blood and the two ways that they see each other winning, you can totally see playing out. Yeah. So, and Marshall and, and Shields, the trash talk's going to be great there as well. And, and I'm, I'm going to tell that you one. guys, if you're not, please follow Alicia, what's the last name? Alicia Baumgartner. Bongar and Michaela Mayer on Twitter. They're going yeah. at it. They've been going at it for about two months now, three months. Oh, for sure. Maybe Longer years. than that, for sure. Yeah. And it's it's leading up to the fight. It is yeah. nothing but trash yeah. every it's, day. It's, it's gonna be fun. And then and then we and can close. Marshall as a slight favorite. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, she's gonna she's gonna mop her oh, but, come um, on, man. Yeah. And then and we can close on, on Ant Sky hanging up the hanging up the gloves, man. Oh Mikey man, Garcia. you know Sad day. I came out to LA to meet Mikey, man. I've been looking for him, man. <laughs> We've met Mikey before. We <laughs> were together you. when we met Mikey. Because you be snitching, man. Stop snitching. I ain't think about it. You want me to hit him up, Ant? <laughs> nah, man. I, I think I'll drive cry. one of his race cars. You want nah, him to drive you one of his race cars? I ain't ready to accept it. I ain't ready to accept it. It's kind of like people trying to accept you retired. That's all right. Yeah. I, when you retired, you know, I was like, yeah, thank God. When he yeah. retired, it hurts me, man. Just, yeah. That's my guy, man. I really yeah. want to see him in there with, with some guys. Yeah, great I career. Felt like, I felt like, what was the one we wanted to see? Was it Lomachenko? Lomachenko. Yeah. yeah, I think I just wanted to see that before it was over. Oh, I thought about that the other day. I was like, hey, he never moved up to fight, to take on that big fight against Earl Spence. And hey. that's still. He, I, t- I he, said, he, he might won every round of that Earl Spence He fight. might still be. Hey, man, he, chill out. He might still be who you thought he was. Or the best, the, really is. the best was that when Mikey said that he saw something. Ant believed it 100. percent That's how you know Ant. That's Ant's guy. Hey, it was like you said it on the show. Man, it like I keep watching fights with each eye, trying yeah. to see what Mikey saw. I can't see it. He nah, sees nah, something. Nah, 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 nah. He sees something. Nope, no, no, I just I can't see it. No, no, it was you know I'm a big fan of him. There was some fights, and there was a fight with Sean fought, and I I seen. I'm be oh, okay. I'm set. There was a fight that Sean fought to Terrence Crawford. I could not find a way to Sean to beat Terrence Crawford. I ain't even gonna lie. When Mikey's fight Earl, it was nothing I seen. I said, there's no way he can beat Earl Smith. There's nothing. And it was hurting me to my heart. Cause I was I was standing, I was standing up till five in the morning. Some late nights. Was, my man had Sean, some late Sean, nights watching with one Sean eye. Be, <laughs> Carver, and he to be Smith. And I could not find he he was nice. like listen. It was like when people used to listen to songs backwards because there was like a, a hidden message in it. Ant was watching all kinds of fights, looking for and something in the watch crowd. Any of the fights in slow motion, forwards oh, and yeah. backwards. Somebody with a laser so, pointer in the crowd. Sean, you, you know me. I used to get you pointers. If you noticed the Crawford fight, I really had nothing for you. I was hyping you up. He said, just do your best. 
I guess now you know how many how many of your notes I read because I didn't realize you ain't send me nothing for car. For car. Hey, hey, I, but my yeah. son laughed at. He <laughs> said, Mo, "He said, he said it's the it's the losers that talk about winning." He was giving them all kinds of fortune cookie but, wisdom. But, there. But, but no, Mikey below, uh, Mikey one forty and below had a hell of a career. One forty seven, he went up there to get the money, and I understand it's a business. But Mikey below, Mikey had a hell of a decision. Um, he had a, a hell of a career. Tactician is how I describe Mikey. And then the other thing I'll say on Mikey, and then we can let it go. But you know, I really think he, he was defining what what you always talk about. And you know, you you say guys always going for greatness. You know, mm-hmm. him moving up to one forty seven was it definitely was the money, but also he was going for greatness. He was trying yeah. to leave a big mark on the sport of boxing. Doing it at one thirty, at one thirty-five, and then trying to move up to one forty-seven to get it done. That was it. Was a part of him chasing greatness. So we definitely, if he if he is done, I actually do. I believe that he he he's done. And um, you know, I definitely want to want right. to clap and salute a career. Uh, yeah. Mike yeah. Garcia for made a lot of money, yeah. money yeah. longer than train smoke. Yeah. Yeah. He was uh, you, you know, if this is it, you know, <laughs> at, at, <laughs> what's wrong? <at? laughs> Carson said, "Money longer than train smoke." Start thinking of strain smoke. I'm what like, was okay. it? For, I think it was from Shaft. <laughs> okay, Carson Ward. You know, he, he was an excellent, excellent, excellent fighter who you know could have maybe been a special fighter, but he admitted always that you know he didn't love yeah. this sport the way yep. some other guys do. It's something he had an exceptional talent for, and he grew up around his older brother and his father, and, and you know Fernando Vargas, and and he 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 m- had a great career. You know he had a, a borderline Hall of Fame career. Um, and from 126 to one, th- I know he won a title at 140, you know, drop it, lip it, yes. But from but 26 to 30, no, from 26 to 30, he was really, really, really good, you know, uh, and is one of the best punchers pound for pound I, I probably ever covered or seen. They're, they're, in his fight against Jesse Vargas, which I guess winds up being the last win of his career, you know, Jesse's a full fledged welterweight who's knocked out welterweights. And Mikey was just taking his time in the first four rounds or so. And then when he let out that left hook from this little body, you know, I, it was, man, this guy's power is freakish. The fact that he was even able to, to drop a welterweight like that from starting at 26 is incredible. And with no uh, PED real suspicions around him, body always looked natural. And, and he carried his power up like that. Um you know, but but you know, with the took the Spence fight and made a very smart business decision. But it sucks we didn't see Lomachenko at that time at 35 because there's a good chance he could have won that fight and, and timed Lomachenko coming in. But uh, as it stands, borderline Hall of Fame career. If if the if if he, I think he got what he wanted out of boxing, life changing money and won a lot of world titles. But you know, maybe maybe if he was being honest, he'd say he could have done even more in boxing. But from 26 to 35, you know, definitely one of the better guys in, in the last however many years that came through there. And, and pound for pound, one of the best punchers of his era, too. And Great the punch. bit and contract things kind of held him up a little bit as well, yeah. where he, he didn't get the With chance. With top rank in the middle yeah. of his career. Yeah, to, to he was supposed much. to be fighting Gamboa instead of Crawford. Oh, but okay. Gamboa yeah. lit his ass up. And, and Carson, Carson, <laughs> you're the first, first guy to beat the hell out of your boy. He didn't complain after the fight. He's like, yeah, he got Adrian yeah. Broner, he beat the hell out of Adrian Broner. Shout out to Sean Porter, because he did too. So he beat the hell out of Adrian Broner after that fight. Yeah, Ant, Ant's, Ant's favorite finally retired, but uh, yeah, should be a good good card next week. The memories. Um, yeah, as far as Showtime, good show, like Sean said, next week. But um, if you guys are listening to this, those guys did great on the call yesterday for Unity Day. Um, <laughs> I would tell you to buy tickets, unitydayla.com, unitydayla.com <laughs> but it happened already. So um, still go to unitydayla.com because you can donate. <laughs> So go oh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, great cause. Right. Yep. And yeah, anything else? Is that yeah, it? Sign, sign us off, Carson. That was it. I just signed us off. You tell them thanks for the pretty rough. There you go. Have a great day.